Hi everyone, welcome back to New Egg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this Gigabyte motherboard. This is the Z68 XP UD5. It is a Z68 based motherboard which supports Intel second generation core processors. So for starters, let's take a closer look at some of the marketing material here on the retail box. Uh, Gigabyte does feature an EFI Touch BIOS, which combines hybrid EFI technology, but also, which also enables booting from hard drives larger than three terabytes. Thanks to the Z68 chipset, you'd have Intel's Smart Response technology, which is uh, sort of like SSD caching. You combine a small SSD with a mechanical hard drive for up to four times the speed improvement. As mentioned, this does support Intel's second generation core processors. It is a socket 1155 motherboard, uh, and this motherboard also has video outs built into the motherboard, which means you can take advantage of the integrated GPU on your second generation Intel Core processors, and that is by way of the Virtue uh, software, which is made by Lucid. Uh, we also have some SLI and Crossfire support. Let's flip around here to the back, try not to drop the box. Two-way SLI and two-way crossfire are both supported. Uh, also, we have 20-phase power design to provide power to the CPU for all of you overclockers out there. And uh, that's about all we're going to point out here for the front of the box. Next up, let's look inside the box. All right, let's start out, and we'll go over the included accessories. As mentioned, we do have support for SLI and crossfire, so there is an SLI bridge, two-way bridge. Uh, if you're going to do crossfire, generally the crossfire bridge is included with your crossfire compatible video card. Here are a couple, looks like one, two, oh, three, four, four total serial ATA cables. Uh, two of these have L brackets on one end. We have, of course, your input output shield to put on the back of your case so your motherboard has a nice tidy input outputs. Here is your motherboard manual, which you should keep on hand while you're doing your build. Also inside we have the Gigabyte driver disk. It's usually best to uh, download the latest drivers from the Gigabyte website, but it's also handy to have that on hand, especially if your internet port does not work right after you load Windows. Next up, we do have a USB 3.0 bracket. Let's hold it this way, uh, which you can install in a 3.5 inch drive bay on the front of your computer that will allow you to take one of the USB 3.0 headers on the motherboard and route it to a couple USB 3.0 ports on the front of your case. Very nice to have. A little warning here, if you are using this motherboard, you want a socket 1155 CPU. That's a second generation core processor, not a socket 1156, which is the first generation core processors. Make sure you get the right processor to be compatible with your motherboard. Uh, we also have an Intel Smart Response Technology Guide, so very nice to have that along with the motherboard so you can figure out how to set up your Smart Response Technology if you're going to use a SSD and a mechanical hard drive, and finally a multilingual installation guidebook. That is just about all for accessories. Wait, there's one more item. It's a Dolby sticker. So people know that you have high quality audio in your computer. Next up, we have the motherboard itself. All right, guys, the motherboard is good to go. And here's a look at the back of it. Here you can see we have a flat black PCB and all of our heat sinks are mounted with uh, actual Phillips head spring-loaded screws, so nice to be able to remove those if you need to. Here is a look at the front of the motherboard, and you can see that we have pretty much black ports on the black PCB. Uh, we have some gray uh, heat sinks that have sort of a graphite look to them, and we have some blue highlights going on, so very nice. And you also see there is a little 5 right up there on that heat sink, which is because this is the UD5 version of this motherboard. But uh, enough for aesthetics, let's talk about all the ports and everything that we have in here. We'll start down in the bottom right with our uh, front panel connectors. And there are, is our front panel connector port. Those are all color-coded. They also have a little chart right underneath so you can connect your front panel connectors. Next to that, we have a couple USB 2.0 front panel headers. Uh, in between the USB 2.0 and the USB 3.0 headers, we have a three-pin case fan header. So you can plug in a case fan there. Uh, as I just mentioned, two USB 3.0 front panel headers uh, as well. And then moving right along over here on this side, we have one four pin PWM uh, case fan header, one three pin case fan header. We have a Firewire 1394 socket right there with a little cap over it. And then that's pretty much it for our front panel items. Uh, we do have an HD audio, I should mention, that's right up here tucked behind the audio ports on the input outputs uh, that you can connect to the HD audio on your front panel. Uh, next up, let's talk about our PCI slots that we have right here. 
Uh, starting off with a couple single speed PCI slots right there. In between those is our 16 speed main PCI slot that we can use to connect our video card. You should probably use that one for your video card. Uh, with triple spacing down here we have the next PCI slot, or PCI Express, Express slot I should say. You can use that for your SLI or your Crossfire. And that is a physical uh, this is actually a physical 16 speed slot and it runs at X8. Uh, finally down here on the bottom we have another physical 16 speed slot PCI Express, PCI Express and that's wired for X4. In between those we have a couple legacy PCI slots if you have any legacy PCI devices that you want to plug in. Moving right along over here under the Gigabyte logo we have our chipset. That's a Z68 chipset once again featured on this motherboard. That chipset controls these serial ATA ports right over here. Uh, we have four black ones, those are all serial ATA revision 2, 3 gigabit per second ports. The two white ones here are serial ATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second ports. Moving up the side, we have our 24 pin power supply connector. Uh, we also have a, another 3 pin uh, case fan header. We also have a surface mounted power switch right there, so very handy to have the surface mounted power switch, especially if you're doing an outside the box build for testing and whatnot. Uh, the little blue switch right there is also a reset switch and then we also have a clear CMOS as well. Moving right along we have our DIMM slots. These will support DDR3 memory. You want to use 1.5 volt DDR3 memory. There's four DIMMs. It supports up to 32 gigs of memory, although admittedly the 8 gig DIMMs are pretty hard to find at this point. But eventually, if you can get them, you can have up to 32 gigs of memory on this board. And it supports DDR3 overclock speeds of up to 2133 megahertz. Up here is our CPU fan 4-pin header, and then right here we have the CPU socket area. You can see that we have uh, some pretty solid heat sinks all around the CPU socket. These have a heat pipe design running through them for extra heat dissipation. This is a 1155 socket again for your second generation core processor. And around here you, you can see all the caps and MOSFETs and chokes for your 20-phase power delivery for the CPU socket. Right up here on the top left we have another 3-pin system fan header. Right below that we have an 8-pin EPS power connector for your supplemental CPU power. Uh, especially, make sure you plug that in, especially if you're going to overclock or just boot up your system at all. And moving along to our back panel input outputs. Over here on the left side we have a couple USB 2.0 ports with the red ports there. Below that is a combo PS2 port and that is for a mouse or a keyboard. Next to that we have a couple uh, audio outputs. There is a coax out there, the orange port, and we have an optical Toslink audio out right above that. Uh, we have a bunch of yellow ports here. The ones on top uh, are a firewire, or two firewire ports, a full-size one there, and a mini firewire. The two ports below that are both USB 2.0 ports, and the ports below that are both eSATA ports. Those are controlled by a Marvell 88SE9128 chip. They're both 6 gigabit per second, SATA Revision 3 compatible, uh, and you can al also set up RAID 0 or RAID 1, so you can set up your external eSATA devices connecting to those ports. Uh, next, moving along, we have a couple USB 3.0 ports here, two more USB 3.0 ports there, so four USB 3.0 integrated on the back panel total. Next to that, we have a LAN port that is a gigabit LAN port. It's controlled by a real, uh, oops, sorry. It's controlled by a Realtek RTL 8111E chip, uh, 1,000 megabit LAN port there. Next to that, we have our audio outputs. This is capable of 7.1 channel uh, output. It is Dolby High Definition Audio compatible. And then finally, we cannot forget this little port right here that's covered with a little plastic chip. That is our HDMI output, and that will allow us to use the integrated GPU thanks to the Z68 chipset that we have. So once you get a Generation 2 core processor uh, from Intel plugged into your socket over here, uh, you don't even need a discrete graphics card. Uh, you can just use that video out, or you can use it in tandem with a discrete graphics card thanks to the Lucid technology that's built in by installing that software. And that's going to wrap it up for today's unboxing and overview. Once again, this has been the Gigabyte Z68 XP UD5 supporting Intel's second generation core processors on the 1155 socket and the Z68 chipset. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel for more videos just like it and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.